G'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. Turbo Tristan here in today's video. I'm just gonna go over everything that we've done so far on the B18C2. This is a VTIR Integra DC2 engine. We have built it in the last video. Now we talked about the max speeding rods. Rods, we put some brand new pistons in there and gapped the rings down. The head's been machined. I've dunny brushed the bores so there's no score marks in them and it's got a nice cross hatch pattern. We've put some ACL race bearings in there, some ARP head studs. Today I'm going to lash the valves. So that is lashing is the distance between the cams or the rockers and the valve springs in this case. So how much movement they've got until from when the cam hits it to when it hits the valve and pushes the valve down. So we're gonna do that. I've got the specs. I'm just gonna look up the correct procedure and how to do it, whether you do it I don't know. I'm going to look up how to do it. I haven't actually done it before, so I'm going to do that. In today's video, we're going to talk about the turbocharger. Now, this is a Garrett G series. It's a G30 660 turbo. Now, this is good for between 300, 350 horsepower, somewhere around there. In Australian, that is about 220 kilowatts to maybe 250 when it's turned all the way up. The engine could probably handle more, but it's an open deck bore, which means the cylinders are pressed in to the block and there's room for it to move around because the water jacket flows around the cylinders. In an engine like we've got here, which is the Evo block, it's a closed deck bore. So the whole thing is cast and the cylinders are cast in and they press sleeves into that casting and the whole engine is actually cast iron. It's very heavy, so it's a whole different ball game. That's why they can handle more power than one of these. The only way to overcome that is to sleeve the block or a band-aid solution is a CSS, so cylinder support system, where you put a brace around the cylinders between the alloy block and the metal cylinders to stop it moving under boost. This guy, we've gone with Garrett. Garrett Advancing Motion is the premium top tier turbocharger system in the world, hands down, no questions about it. This is the best brand of turbo, model, manufacturer, and best reputation of any turbo on planet Earth. It's undisputed. That's it. I am very, very fortunate at this point in my YouTube career to be able to get Garrett on board. And I tell you what, I wish that the Garrett was going onto one of my own cars that I own, but instead it's going on my good friend Nauki's Integra. At least it's going to a good home. Hopefully in future, if you guys love and watch this and reach out and let everyone know that you saw it here on the Turbo Tristan channel, that Garrett will want to work with me more in the future. We got this hookup through MTQ Turbochargers in Dandenong. MTQ is a company that uh, distributes, rebuilds, tunes, sells replacement parts, OE parts, aftermarket parts, many different brands, but they do specialize in Garrett. Those guys are the hookup for me, and I was able to speak with Jazz and the team from MTQ Dandenong to hook this up and they spoke to Garrett for me and we're all friends now, which is fantastic. We've gone with the T3 exhaust housing. So when you buy a brand new turbo, people just think they come like this assembled. With Garrett's, they are so customizable and they are such the leaders in their field that every single part of the turbo is totally customizable. So you can get a different size compressor wheel, different size compressor housing, whether you want anti-surge or whether you want, the sky's the limit, there's so many different kinds, or whether you want OE bolt flanges, uh, whether you want the speed sensor port or not. But the main one is the exhaust housing. Now this manifold we're using uh, is to, for the factory head flange down to a T3 flange. We got this one from Elusive Racing, just around the corner, local guys tried and tested manifold. And because this manifold had a T3 flange, we went with a T3 turbo on this side. It's a 0.86 rear housing, so plenty of volume here for the exhaust gases to flow through. Spin up the turbo, it'll make it nice and responsive 
and still unrestrict the flow of the turbo. What you need to factor in is the size of the exhaust ports coming out, all of those gases ramming in together in the collector and then how's it gonna flow through here now? If you had a low flowing engine like a D-Series, you could run with a T2 or a T28 style flange and it would be fine. If you're going for big horsepower, something over three or 400, then you'd go to a bigger exhaust flange, flows more exhaust gas. It depends what you want. With these engines, they do like to breathe and we do want all the experiences of a turbo. So we've gone for the 0.86 rear housing on the G-frame turbo. This is still, in my opinion, a small frame turbo for this size engine. A lot of people in the States run a 3582, so it's much bigger than this one. So this is a still a 35 roughly, but with a 660 on the front. And we've got the V-band flange here at the back. The other thing which is super duper amazing is this brand new wastegate design from Garrett. Now, they've been in the game for a million years. They make their own wastegates, but now they make their own external wastegates in a 40, 45, and a 50 mil. We've gone right in the middle with the 45, and I've actually last night changed out the springs in here, but it's all set up. It can be water-cooled if you're running it in a super-duper serious application where, you know, it's racing for endurance races or um, extreme high heats or if the, the wastegate's in a really, really hot spot, you can run water cooling through here and it'll cool everything to do with your boost control because the last thing you want is this to get cooked, melt the diaphragm, and then you've got no boost control. However, these are rated to extreme heats. I've seen them glowing red hot and still doing their job absolutely perfect. So testimony to Garrett, amazing, amazing products. And if there's anyone you're gonna trust controlling your boost it's definitely garrett if it's anyone you're going to trust giving you the boost it's definitely garrett we are so happy to have garrett on board for this build Nowki nearly fell over when i told him about uh, he was getting a garrett turbo on his integra turbo build all of the boys are all super duper jealous of Nowki getting a g-series turbo on his turbo build it was meant to be a budget build then we needed to build the engine Andy's getting a Garrett, so it's not really a budget build anymore. We've got rods, pistons, and the cream of the crop turbo on there. We aren't going for a million billion horsepower on this build, but this is gonna make some serious power, and the goal is to make it reliable and sleeper fast, like blow everyone away. It's gonna be in a light car. It's gonna be super responsive and make a ton of power, but we're not going for this massive dyno number. I think personally, if it makes 230 kilowatts at the wheels, that would be mission accomplished, absolutely perfect and reliable for many, many years. Now, when you buy a wastegate from Garrett, you get every single possible combination of springs in there, and they actually all come set to 14.9 PSI or exactly one bar, which is the way the Japanese and PSI is Imperial. I don't know why we talk in PSI here in Australia, but bar is metric. So one bar is what the wastegate comes set at factory. Now, because we wanna go be able to adjust the boost up and down to suit our power levels, possibly even our gear, boost by gear, all that sort of stuff in the future and keep it reliable, run a high and a low boost. I've changed this out to a six PSI spring. And that was just a matter of disassembling the wastegate and switching out the springs. We can pump in any combination of these springs. They're all actually designed to fit inside one another. There's grooves and everything designed into the wastegate. So you can get all of the boost pressure in there and it won't open until you hit like 35 or 40 PSI. Maybe one day if we ever sleeve the block and stroke it and do all that stuff, but I'm pretty sure now he's gonna be very happy with around 200 and something kilowatts at the wheels. But we've got all of these for the future if we ever need to go any bigger. The wastegate is V-banded. I've got that in and I've remembered to put in the fire ring this time. We've also got the wastegate flange here for the screamer pipe. Yes, we will be running a screamer. I've gone ahead and already started fitting up some of the Raceworks fittings, Raceworks silicon, Raceworks hose clamps, Raceworks 
water lines. And I've also made the Raceworks Dash 10 oil drain line. It's nice and short, direct, and it's got just the right amount of bends in it. Once you finish here, it's only like a very small amount of rubber. And I've sheathed it here with the silicon heat sheathing, which is amazing and also looks amazing. As discussed, I've uh, got to get the exhaust made up. And because this build has taken me a long time to acquire all the parts, I'm pretty sure I actually lost the V-band flange. And just like the cam gear cover, it'll turn up once I go out and buy a new one. So I've ordered a new one of these. Once it arrives, I'm sure the old one will turn up somewhere. And then I can get to work welding the exhaust. It's gonna be quite tight coming out here and then wrapping around to go underneath the engine. Now I won't be using this dirty old piece of truck stainless, but you can see just how tight it's gonna to need to be. And we're gonna go really tight there because I don't want the exhaust to come out past the turbo. I'm not gonna swing it right around here like this. It's gonna come out and be really tight and everything's gonna clear underneath here. So I don't actually want a big pipe out this way. It's gonna be very tight down and then tight again underneath there. I'm sure I can get it done. And uh, I think it's gonna work well, be awesome and flow excellent. I'll then heat wrap it to keep the heat away from the intake, the turbo, and just generally in the engine bay, keep the heat out as much as possible. Keep it away from cooking the oil, cooking the air that's coming out here because there will be an intercooler pipe that's gonna run uh, in front of the exhaust so that's why another reason why we have to have that heat shield because the cold air is going to go in here it's going to get heated up in the turbo from the residual heat from here and then get pushed out here through a pipe around through the intercooler now i've already got these mocked up i've taken some raceworks pipe i've put a bead roll on with my raceworks bead roller and i took it to next level fabrication and I just got that extended a little bit uh, put a 40 mil extension in there into the intercooler through the raceworks coupler now the intercooler that we're using is a stealth black uh, tube and fin from max peating rods so they've supplied us the rods and also the intercooler and then we've got the eBay pipe kit two and a half inch which comes down out and around and up here now this pipe here I've just got mocked in so I can mount things and just get a gauge of where everything's going to live I won't be using this pipe it's a little bit too long and it's got a blow off our port on there which we're going to delete that we want all the flutters and surges and everything even though they're not good for the turbo we'll probably put one on later on another cool thing that I've done is we have a brand new fuel filter on there using the factory lines. And I was able to put a um, M12 by 1.5 threaded dash six adapter onto here. And now we're running dash six fuel hose straight out. That's gonna go in the rail, which is gonna live about here somewhere. Out of the rail, we go into the fuel pressure reg. We've got a Raceworks fuel pressure reg, which I have mounted up. Uh, used an existing hole here behind for the fuel filter bracket. So there was one hole here. I've bent the bracket that comes with the fuel reg to make that mount there. And I've made it so it sits behind this hose here. So I hope I've left myself enough room. Then a return line back down to the factory hard lines. The next tricky part is to fit the Raceworks catch can. I'm not sure where I'm going to put that just yet, just due to... I'm not used to working on cars with giant ABS modules. I've got the TurboSmart four port boost controller, which I'm gonna make a little bracket for and mount that just here. And I've started to refit up the power steering, We've put some Raceworks hose there because these were leaking everywhere. And if you remember, the whole entire rail was just covered in power steering hose. So I've gone over all of that, cleaned it up and made sure there's no more leaks. We've got the power steering cooler back on and we're going with a half size radiator that's gonna live just here. 
We're going to need a little bit of room here for the turbo and the wastegate and intercooler pipes and stuff. The next thing I've done is gone ahead and changed out the steering rack boots. They were all split. So we've got brand new ones of those on now. And I'm just waiting on stock for the outer tie rod ends. So we're doing a little bit of a resto at the same time to this Integra. Like I've been telling you guys, I've been burning the candle at both ends. I've stripped down the engine from the Evo and uh, I did that first. Now I'm gonna do the valve lash. Shout out to Eric the car guy, mate, OG. 11 years ago, he did a video about how to do the valve lash on a B18 C2. I just skipped through it, watched it, and he gave me some great tips. So I'm just gonna do it exactly the way he did. One other point uh, for all you Honda boys, this sticker up here on the bonnet tells you the spark plugs, the spark plug gap, the valve lash, the timing, everything you need to know about how to tune up the car and do the maintenance on it. So it's right in front of you. Every time you open up the bonnet, all the specs and everything are right there. So awesome tip. I'm gonna get to work doing that. Then I can seal up the top of the engine, put the valve cover gasket on and seal it up, put some spark plugs in it and uh, it's one more step closer. So just like in all of our builds, the Evo, my car, Ronda, we are running Denso Iridium Power Spark Plugs. These are courtesy of Raceworks or Premier Auto Trade. And uh, mate, we're gonna just check the gap on these, make sure it's um, down to around 0.8. And then I'm gonna shove them in and get ready to seal this valve cover up once and for all. Silly me, I just remembered you don't really have to gap Iridium spark plugs. They're already at around about 0.75 or something like that. Um, I've been checking them with the feeler gauge and yeah, they're already down there. And because of the tips on these guys, you really shouldn't be messing with them too much being that they're Iridium tips. So ignore that last bit. I've just whipped up a really quick bracket Basically just a bent piece of steel with three holes drilled in it. And that houses the Billet Raceworks four port boost solenoid, uh, which is actually a TurboSmart product, which Raceworks, TurboSmart and Garrett for me go hand in hand in every build. And we will be running the four port to control the boost on the top and bottom of the dome here for the external wastegate on the Garrett Turbo. So I've just shoved a microfiber in that end and I've put one of my rubber gloves over this end to stop things getting into the turbo. I've got the flywheel just here. Now I'm gonna get this machined, but part of me thinks I don't need to because you can see there are no burn marks, wear marks, or any uneven spots at all on that. I'm not sure when this flywheel was last machined, but you can still see every single mark on it. But I'm not gonna pull it out again if there's an issue with it, so I'm just gonna get it machined again. To me, that's incredible. We have a competition clutches stage four or five from Lucy Racing to go in here. Once I've made the downpipe off the back of the turbo, we'll slap that on, and then it's uh, engine in the car time. So very close now. The longest part's gonna be welding up the downpipe going under the car. Next video will be exhaust done and engine in the car. Cannot wait for that. And also we're gonna build a pretty sick screamer pipe for this. So at the moment I've got it oriented here. So we'll just do a 90 straight down. I might end up giving the Garrett wastegate a quarter turn and pointing it down. That way it's less bends and just a straight down for the screamer. But we'll do something cool with it. And then we're nearly there, it's getting close. I've put in the fuel lines here, as I mentioned earlier. So I've got in, out, 1,000cc injectors in there. We've got the fitting in the top of the factory fuel filter. Once I can get into the car, because it's up in the hoist at the moment, I'll stick in the Walbro 460 fuel pump. Then it's a couple of pipes fabbed up, and we are there, guys. So it's been a long haul. It's been a long journey. We started this six months ago. But she's fully sealed up. Valve lash is done as best as I can manage. Uh, I've made it all dragging on every single one. I've turned the engine over, checked it, turned the engine over, checked it, made some adjustments. Uh, and I'm pretty happy that they're all even. 
the intake is 0.17 and the exhaust is 0.19 with a bit of a drag with the feeler gauge through there so um, i've actually done them on the tight side of the tolerances but that's going to be it guys for this episode don't forget spool up subscribe bring the boost and we'll see you in the next one 80% of you guys aren't subscribed, so subscribe. We've got plenty more turbo content where this comes from. Once this is in the car, we'll be jumping back onto my Civic and we'll probably either turn it up or turn it down. I don't know what I'm going to do, but we need to give my Civic some TLC. Hopefully this is off the hoist by then and the shed is a lot cleaner and emptier over the Christmas break. But that's the goal. See you in the next one. Cheers.